Hello, this is Anthony from Tech of Tomorrow in Orange County talking to Justin from Hydro Methods about painting these three cases. Here's us. Yeah, again, this is Justin with Hydro Methods. We're down here in Orange County, California. Uh, we're just talking about a new process that allows us to do a full custom paint job to a number of different products. One being these computer cases that we're going to be doing today. We've got a number of different kind of patterns that we're going to be doing. Uh, for these three, We've got a real nice skull pattern. We've got another carbon fiber, and we've got one called a wild bomb over here. What we'll go over down the road in, in the video is more of the process, but we've got hundreds of different patterns to choose from. These are just a few select few that uh, we're gonna be rolling with, and I think you're gonna enjoy the video. We're going to start by taking all the stuff off of here so he can paint it. That means we have to take off all of the electronics, the grill, the filter on the bottom so the paint could stick to just the case. So I'm going to start taking it apart right now. All right, what we got going on is when the first step of doing the hydrographic slash water transfer printing, they're both synonymous in the industry. Uh, the, the most common misconception is that a hydrographic process is like a, a wrap and it couldn't be further from the truth. A wrap is like a sticker. Uh, it, a lot of them are very detailed and a lot of them look fantastic. Uh, and there's different applications that are best suited for either process uh, for this. The hydrographic process, it is hands down, without any confusion, a legitimate custom paint job. With that said, the whole process from going from start to end is identical to a custom paint job with the exception of the process where I would usually be hitting it with an airbrush to get those custom graphics and the custom design is when I'm actually dipping it in the tank and applying that custom image uh, and that through that process instead however given that this is a custom paint job we do always follow the first step in any paint job and that's with a, a very thorough and well prepped piece prepping is one of the most critical and important process in the entire step if you don't do it right or if you have facet it's going to end up compromising your piece and the paint and the image isn't going to hold up to the elements down the road. So it's something you do not want to have fast. You don't want to skip through. You want to make sure you're thorough and you do it diligently. Otherwise, it's going to show in your work. Now with any kind of paint job, you got to make sure it's clean. Uh, fortunately, we're using brand new pieces. So we don't have to worry about all the dust and the dirt and the mud being stuck to it. However, you always still want to hit it with uh, so something like a, similar to like a degreaser. It, it's really a solvent that, that takes off any kind of uh, like a sticker residue or oil or any kind of uh, really strong uh, oil or grease that soap and water wouldn't typically get rid of. And it's a simple process, especially given where we're at now, being it, that it's brand new. We hit it lightly with the, with the degreaser or the solvent, excuse me. It's not an actual degreaser, but we hit it with the solvent we wipe it down and then we hit it quickly with a second clean rag. That way we're not leaving any kind of film or residue that could ultimately be left there for the paint to adhere to. You want a clean, bare uh, piece of uh, product or substrate that you're gonna be actually painting. So once that's done, after we hit it with the solvent, 
then the, the next process in any kind of paint job would be to scuff it down. And different kinds of products such as uh, plastic, metal, wood, whatever it may be, uh, may require different kind of scuffing materials. This is a plastic. The only thing that's necessary is a simple gray scotch bright. You could do a, a real fine uh, piece of sandpaper if you wanted. Six to eight hundred would be fine. Really, the what you're going for is just giving it a light scuff, <laughs> excuse me, and uh, trying to get rid of the, the, the gloss of the yellow. Once you scuff it, you'll see it uh, the finish dole out and it'll be almost like a matte finish. When you see that dull appearance, you'll know that it's scuffed well enough to continue to move on to the next part. Now the reason why you scuff it is so that you're building the, that, that bite for the paint to adhere to. You're, right now it's got a real flat and slick finish. When you scuff it, it gives it that, that extra bite so that the paint is able to adhere to it and, and withstand those, the, the longevity of what a paint job needs, to whether it's outside in the elements or even inside underneath your desk. Uh, taking out the elements of kicking it when you get frustrated or spilling your, your energy drink on it. Either way, that's the process. It is, I, I can't stress enough, a, a legitimate custom paint job. And like any other paint job, prepping is critical. And that's what we're going on next. So I'm going to go on and move forward. We're going to wipe it down, get it cleaned up, and we're going to get her scuffed, and we'll move on to the next piece. Right, guys uh, just like in any other paint job this one we finished prepping everything I wiped everything down with a nice tack cloth made sure all the dust is free and that there's nothing in terms of particles or dirt or dust that could be on the product at this point it's time to spray the primer down the first stage and actually laying down the paint we're gonna go ahead and lay that down it's gonna be a white primer after that we're gonna proceed with the silver paint and once we're done with that, we're gonna proceed with uh, the fun part, and that's getting the dip going. So you'll see me laying down the primer now, and we'll, uh, we'll get going on the video.